Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the Decent Espresso factory. Now the Decent Espresso factory is based in Hong Kong. There are eight rooms for a total of 24,000 square feet of space. We're right now in the video studio, which used to be our warehouse for storing suitcases. And if we go through here, you can see in the corner here that there's some suitcases remaining, but basically this is our staging area for things going into the studio. And down the hall here is the Decent Espresso entrance. And Decent Espresso machines going off to the world. Come on in. This is the boxing room where everything gets boxed to go out. So we always try to ship within the 24 hours after you purchased. Here's all the accessories. In that corner over there, you can see those are the espresso machines that are going out from yesterday's orders. Behind me is a mountain of suitcases because every espresso machine we ship is packaged in a suitcase. These are all the accessories we sell. It's the stock for them all. And here next to all these toilets is the stress testing room. And the reason we have this behind a door is because there's two machines there that each have made 200,000 espressos each. And what we do is every time we have a new component, we put it in here and we run it for hundreds of thousands of espressos so that we know it's called the mean time between failure, which is how long will it survive. And recently we've reached a point now where we actually can't make things fail. The numbers are just going up and up, which is good news. That is the ultrasonic bath, and when you get a machine repaired, we take the parts apart, and the brass goes in there in a cleaning product overnight so that it comes out all nice and shiny. Here we've got a bunch of T porta filters that have been disassembled, and they're being checked and cleaned. In this area here, this is Alex's R&D area. He has a whole bunch of machines that he's doing stuff to. Uh, over here, we're working on laser etching, and he's working on a panel for Hazard Coffee. You can see he's done a whole bunch of tests, as well as other things, in order to figure out what laser frequency and strength looks best. You'll occasionally see me shoot videos in here. This is Michael's Kitchen, where every day the staff get together and enjoy a home-cooked meal. And this alley here is where we store decent espresso machines that have been built. When you go to our website and you see all the different serial numbers, these are the machines that we are sending out. Now you might notice there's a bunch of empty shelves, and that's because we're just a few weeks from Christmas time and things are kind of moving quicker than we're able to build them. Behind me is Alfred grinding away at something. Hello, Alfred. <laughs> I see you grinding away on our T porta filter, and I believe you're modifying it so there's no interference. And look at that. He's done it in such a way that you can't even tell that he's taken the metal out there. So that's what it looks like before he's worked on it. We do quite a significant amount of retooling, and uh, this is a pretty new room for Alfred because he used to have a small little room when he started working for us, but did such good work that we built a cave just for him. Now we're gonna walk over to the original factory space of Decent Espresso. Let me show you it to you. This is our lunchroom and Christmas tree. Over here is my office. This is Johnny's and Alex's office, and Johnny is our most senior engineer and involved in most everything that happens inside the machine. This here is the den of Paul. Many of you will have talked to him. Here is Paul busy giving the thumbs up to the cameras. In this room, we've got Celine and Bugs. 
Selene and Bugs busy at work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Selene handles all the shipping stuff and many other things besides, and Bugs handles everything that no one else will do. Just numbers. So, just numbers. numbers. Big screen, big spreadsheet. <laughs> Everybody who works at Decent Espresso gets a cartoon done of them, and this is everyone who works for us on this quasi-org chart. When we first started several years ago, all machines were actually built in the little space between where you can see Teddy and where I'm standing. This is the original factory about six years ago. And we've obviously swallowed all these spaces all around. We're now in 24,000 square feet, and there's eight rooms that are 3,000 feet each. These are machines that were just recently completed. When they get completed here, they get mounted on moving racks and taken over to the boxing area. Now we're in the factory proper. We've got three assembly lines with 50 machines each being built. This is the engineering pit here. Nicole is head of the factory. Simon is our head repairman. And Keith over there is the master of AC and DC PCBs. This is the first step in building a decent espresso machine. We assemble the parts here, and Terence is the master of what's called the manifold, which is an assembly of all our sensors, as well as valves that direct the water in various places. And there he is assembling one. He also does all the testing on it. We work on a system of masters of certain tasks, and in that way, they are improving all the time. They can give feedback, and uh, Terence is not exactly a high school graduate. He's got an advanced degree in engineering, and he's able to give us quite a lot of feedback on how the product can be, how the parts can be improved, which is one of the reasons our machines have become quite reliable. Over here, we've got Lung working on the heaters. And this is our own design heater. If I grab one from here, you'll see this is the actual heater here. It's a two meter long coil encased in aluminum, two thermal safeties, and a, another thermostat, as well as a insulating box around it. And here is Lung working on it here. Ruby here is the master of the group head controller, who's doing assembly of the group heads and final cleanup. And she's packing finished group heads that she's done. This is what a finished group head looks like. And I'll walk you through the parts. We use aerogel from Korea. We use glass here, tops from Corning. And then the PCBs here get mounted onto the glass and then assembled into this. Over here are fully assembled group heads and they're going to undergo a water pressure test. So what we're doing here is using a jig that Alfred put together where you've got a pressure sensor pumps water and we're going to bring it up to pressure and make sure there's absolutely no leaks. Here is the first step in building one of our machines. We get these aluminum chassis like this. This is our design, but it comes all welded and riveted. And there's only two things that have been done to this so far. They've put the front panel on with a plastic protective sheet and a USB plug here for charging the tablet. But otherwise, this is the absolute first step. And what's happening behind me is in our 144 version, we have front panels that don't have any screws here. And that complicates things quite a bit. Now what we've got is this fancy plexiglass jig that, again, Alfred put together. And what we've done is vice down the machine so it's exactly in the right place. Everything's holding it. And the very last step is to pull out plastic strips so that the glue is held in place. Okay. And here we've got 
fully assembled machines that are just about done. What they don't have is legs on the bottom, and they are also are still requiring what's called the high pot test. So all the electrical cables are still visible, and this is a rather expensive machine that puts very high voltage through the whole system to see if anything sparks. So it's essentially, it's an insulation test uh, that is required for safety compliance. And here we've got 50 machines that have been already finished. In fact, most of them have already been tested. On the side here, we're doing burn-in testing. And so these machines are going to run for quite a long time, hot to make sure that they work. Over here, Gay is doing a final test of the system, making sure that the hot water works, the steam works. You can see he's using his phone camera to record everything. And that video that he's making right now will be posted along with the machine in the system. On the right-hand side, you can see the tablet, and he's got a thermoprobe in here showing us the current temperature inside the system. That's a test to make sure that steam is right, and he's taking a photo of the sensor readings to make sure it's working. He's just done a test of the safety. He's just done an AC cut. That's essentially if you hit the standby button, uh, making sure that the safety actually does work. Here on the computer, we've got a debug log and firmware reading. Two last stages before the machine is ready to go. Teddy, who is both a supervisor of the assembly process and also does final assembly. And it's very much like an executive chef, making sure that every dish is perfect before it goes to a guest. He is putting the spring that will hold the tablet stand on and all the cosmetic parts, making sure that everything looks right. Once the machine is fully assembled, it goes here to a light box. Here we'll put every machine through this huge turntable and this 4K camera. And this video will also be available to you. It's also a quality control measure to make sure that this person sees absolutely no flaws in the machine before the video is then passed on to a potential customer. This is the staff espresso bar, where we have machines in various stages of completion. Some of these machines won't see the light of day for several years, but we're testing them here to see how they actually survive, how they are used to make two to 300 espressos a day and get feedback from everyone here who makes the machines and then gets to enjoy the coffee. And this is the final stage in our tour. The 150 machines that just get completed get stored in this room before they get put on carts and carried over to boxing for shipping onto you.